So if we were developing code in Java or Python or some other programming language, and we wanted to create a user interface buttons, stuff like that, um, we would have two options. One would be that we build it completely from scratch. We would have to design them in code. We would have to handle um, detecting whether they were clicked on and stuff like that. Um, or we would have to use someone else's code library, um, someone who has made choices for us for how it works. Maybe it adds a bunch of extra you know, um, space to our files and stuff like that. But one of the really cool things about JavaScript um, is that obviously the web has a ton of user interface stuff built right in. Um, it's something we're all really familiar with. And P5.js allows us to create buttons of all different kinds um, right within the browser that we can access and use in our code. Um, so there are you know, a whole bunch of different kinds of buttons. And I'd like to show you a few today. Um, so I've got this basic canvas set up here. And in fact, I don't want this to be window width for now. Um, I'm going to make this a fixed size and um, you could try experimenting with that. So I'm going to make um, five different kinds of buttons today. Um, and I'm, these are all going to be variables. So for each button, I'm going to create a variable. Um, I'm going to call them the name of the type of button they are, but you could call them whatever. So if you remember back from the collage example, when we loaded images, those are variables in the same way these buttons are also variables. So we're gonna make text buttons, we're gonna make radio buttons, we're gonna make a drop down menu, we're gonna make a checkbox, and we're gonna make a color picker. If I can spell it, not pickle, picker, there we go, okay. Um, and these are going to be all the things that we're going to make. Um, so I've got my canvas. I'm also going to turn off my cursor because we're going to make our own cursor again. That should be pretty fun. So then in setup, we haven't talked a lot yet about what you want to do in setup and what you want to do in draw because for static images, it doesn't matter so much. But you want to think of setup as things that you would do once when the program starts and draw things that you would want to do over and over. So we probably wouldn't want to recreate these buttons every frame of the animation because this is going to slow things down or it may not behave the way we want. Um, whereas like drawing commands, we want to have happen down in the draw because it's getting changed every frame. So my text button is the first place we're going to start. And um, most of these have a similar kind of syntax. Obviously, you will want to have the reference open. Um, but for text button, we use create button. And then the argument that it needs is the label that goes inside that. So I'm going to say change background, because we're going to change the background using this button. And then um, we use the dot syntax then to change parameters of this. And we've talked a little bit about dot syntax with images as well, like when we access the width and the height or resized them. Um, and in this case, we can say text button dot mouse pressed. Um, and this is something we want to have it do when, when the button is clicked. What do we want it to do? Um, and we have to give it a, a, the name of a function. So we talked about callback functions a little bit too. Callback function is something that happens um, when an event occurs. And this is very similar. So we're going to give it the name, change background color which is going to be our function. This is not something that already exists. Um, this is a function we're going to create. So down here. And you'll notice um, I'm just listing its name. It's not with parentheses like this. Um, and that's how these kind of callback functions work. It's just the name of the thing. We can't send any arguments to it, but we can have something trigger when it's pressed. Um, and for now, just so we can see this, I'm going to do console.log. Just have it say the word button when we press it. That should be good. And then the last thing I want to add is its position, text button dot position. And this is relative to the whole window, not just to our sketch. So that's my basic text button. If I refresh this and um, we see our button show up here, I'm also going to turn on the console so that we can see the results. And when I click this button, it says button. Cool which is what we want. Now, if we wanted to do something, we're probably going to need to create a variable that we can change. Again, kind of like our last example. Um, let's call this BG color. And I'm going to start it at something, you know, right now we can't see it. Like 
this. And then, um, so there's a number of ways that we could think about changing this background color. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and generate a random RGB. And I've already done that. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste this. Otherwise this video is gonna be really long. Um, and so here we go. This is our um, random RGB. You know, again, I'm converting it from a floating point number to an integer and then formatting it into this color here. And if I save this now, okay, so there's my sketch shows up and when I click it, it generates this random. Now the my UI, it, the button is kind of like on top of the sketch and that's because my window is really narrow. If I made this, oh, and because of the CSS. So anyway, this may or may not bother you. We could certainly move this around. Um, you know, this could be for example, width plus 20. Oops. And now it shows up to the right of our thing here. And that may be closer to what we want. And you push the button, it changes the background color. Cool, so that's a text button. Uh, next up is a radio button. This is like a multiple choice where you can pick between things. And we say create radio. This does not have a label, so this is all we need for this. Uh, but we then need to specify what options uh, it has for that. So I'm going to say radio button dot option. Uh, and we could just copy paste this. So we're going to do square and circle. Um, and then we can also select or choose which one we want to have selected by default. So that's then radio button dot selected square. And then the position radio button dot. And let's do, I like this off to the right here. So we'll do width divided by 20 or plus 20 and 60. Let's run it and make sure it shows up. Cool, there's our little buttons. We can toggle between them. But right now, um, nothing is happening because we haven't told it what to do. Um, I'm not exactly sure why, but radio buttons don't, um, don't, trigger a function when you change them. You can create this thing called a listener, which watches to see when they're changed. Um, but we can also do it inside our draw here. So we can say, um, we want to then be able to change the shape of our cursor based on this. So I can say, let cursor shape equals radio button dot value. So every frame of the animation, we're reading these radio buttons. And then I can say, if cursor shape equals square, we'll draw it as a square. And I'm going to do it from the center again. And this will be at um, mouse X, mouse Y. Uh, we'll make it 50 for now. Else, if we can grab the rest of this instead of square circle, we don't need this, and circle. Okay, so now we should see we have this nice square cursor, and if I change it to circle, now it's a circle, back to square, etc., etc. Cool. This is looking good. Um, that's our radio button, so it's a little different than the um, text button, but same idea, and we can do it within our code here. Uh, what's going to be next? Let's do a drop down menu. Uh, so uh, drop downs for some reason are called select in um, in P5JS. I think of them as a drop down menu, so I'm calling it the variable that, but you can call the variable whatever you want. And um, we can give it options just like the radio button. So I'm going to do 10 and then I'm just going to copy paste a couple of different ones here. So 10. 50 and 100. And I'm going to use this to change the diameter of my cursor. Just like radio button, we can also do selected. Let's start it out at 50. Um, and then uh, like text button, we can note when it's been changed. So I can do drop down dot changed. And this will run a function when uh, the, that's changed. And then lastly, our position. We'll do with, what are we doing? With plus 20 and 100. So then we need to make this function. So again, I'm going to go down here. And um, 
So we want to change the diameter based on what shows up from the drop-down menu. Maybe actually we can first just run this and see it. So here's our little drop-down we can pick from. Um, and so we can read it much like we read um, the value. Where was that? The value from our radio button, we can read the value from the drop-down. So we can say let uh, choice equals drop-down dot value. Now, if I, I cannot type and talk today, uh, choice, if we print this, let's see, there we go. Well, we're not seeing it here, but um, it's a string. So this number is, is text rather than an actual number. And we wanna be able to convert that into a number that we can work with. But luckily, um, uh, JavaScript has a really easy way for us to do this. We're gonna set cursor diameter. Uh, if we just set it to choice, it wouldn't know what to do because it's, a, it's text, it's not a number. But there's this built-in parse integer command, which will convert it for us. Um, so we're, when the drop-down menu is changed, this function runs, we're getting the value from it, and then we're converting it to an integer and setting the diameter of our cursor, uh, which of course we haven't created yet. So let's cursor diameter. We'll start it at 50, and then down here, we can just put this into our code. All right, so let's try running this. Let's see, we've got our square. If I set it to 100, now my cursor is 100 pixels. If I set it to 10, now it's 10 pixels. All right, so that's um, drop downs. Next up is checkbox. So the checkbox, is again, you're going to see a theme here. Checkbox dot, uh, equals create checkbox. This lets us um, create a label for it. So I'm going to say rotate cursor. And we can also set the default value. And this is true or false. True meaning checked, false meaning not checked. And I don't want it to be checked by default. We can say checkbox dot changed. So this is when the state changes um, from checked to unchecked or vice versa. And I'm gonna rotate the cursor when this is checked, which would be kind of fun. And then lastly, uh, position. Okay. Then we need to create our function. Again, I'm sure you're seeing a theme here. And um, if so, if I want this to rotate, then we need a variable to store whether this is wrote, the cursor should be rotating or not. So once again, and I'm gonna go up here, what should we call it? Let's call it, um, well, let's call it rotate cursor. That's gonna be equal to false. So there's two ways that we could toggle that value in our function. We could say if, remember this is run when it, the checkbox changes. Oh, so we could say if, uh, what do we call it? Rotate cursor? Rotate cursor. Um, equals true, then rotate cursor equals false, else. And this would work. It's readable, it's simple, but there's actually a really cool, quicker way we can do that. Now, if you remember when we talked about um, if statements, we talked about does not equal. And the exclamation point character in programming means not. So we can actually say rotate cursor uh, equals not rotate cursor. And this does the same thing as this. Um, so because it, it, this only works for uh, Booleans, for binary values, true or false, um, if it's true, it should be not true, which is false. And if it's false, it should be not true, not false, which is true. Um, so either one of these works, but you'll see in the example code um, that it's listed this way. And then the last thing we're going to want to do is rotate this as a result. So I'm, where am I? I'm starting to run, run out of uh, space here. Um, so I probably want now to put this in push and pop because I need to be able to rotate around its position. And I'm going to translate now to mouse X and mouse Y and change, now my positions here will be zero, zero. And then 
I can say if rotate cursor is true, um, then I'm going to want to do something. And I need, again, to keep track of the angle of rotation for this. So I'm going to make another uh, variable here, which will be angle. And we'll say rotate angle. And then we want to update this. Um, so I'll say angle plus equals radians of, I don't know, two degrees. OK, so I think. I think we have everything now. If we refresh this, we'll see. I don't know why it looks so weird here. It shouldn't look like that. But um, we see this button. And now if I click it, mm, something is not right. Um, checkbox. I'm not sure. It should be working. You may have to take my word for it. Um, yikes. Oh, wait, did we make our, I don't think we made the checkbox. I'm so sorry. Oh my God. You're probably like wondering what's going on. Did we make our checkbox? We did. Ah, this is a great example. So what's happening right now, you know, I always wonder whether to edit this out. I think it's helpful for you to see me screw it up. We're making this checkbox every single frame. Um, the reason this looks so crazy is it's drawing on top of itself over and over and over again. And the reason it can't see me click is because there's like thousands of checkboxes right now. I'm surprised it's not totally just like freaking out. So I actually want to move this to setup. That's where it's supposed to be. Let's try again. That looks much better. And now if I click this, I should see my cursor spinning. Obviously the circle, we won't be able to see it, but we can turn this on and off. Cool. Okay. <laughs> I was really worried for a second. Our last, um, our last button is a color picker. And this is really nice if you wanted to build like a drawing app or something like that. So we could say create color picker. And we do need to specify the initial um, color for this. So our initial color is going to be black. Um, color picker dot input is going to be the function that runs when um, when we ask to open the color picker. And we'll see what that looks like in a second. Um, and then, of course, the position. So with plus 20, 200. So once more, we have to make a callback function. And um, this one is really easy. Um, when we click the, the color picker button. It's going to open our operating system's built-in color picker. So yours might look different than mine. Um, and then when you X out of it, it's going to just give you back the color in a usable format. So um, we're going to make a variable called cursor color. I'm going to make it black for now. And in our draw, where are we? Fill. My fill, did I not do a fill? Looks like I didn't do fill, that's okay. And we are gonna do cursor color. You'll see that um, Sublime, one of the cool things it's doing is um, auto completing as well. I really like that. And then in set cursor color, we say cursor color equals color picker dot color. That's it, this one is really easy. Now, if I run this, here's the color picker button. Um, and if I click it, it opens up. Actually, maybe it's not your operating system. This is Chrome's. In Firefox, it's a little different. Um, but you can switch to different modes. You can pick a color. And now when you click away, my cursor has changed color to match. Change it again. And your cursor. So this can be really nice for picking colors for um, you know, a drawing tool or something like that instead of having to input RGB values. So this is a lot. I know this is a long one, um, but this I wanted to show you a bunch of the different HTML um, built-in kind of like UI elements. Again, this would be a lot of work to make from scratch. If you had to do that, this is much, much easier to do it this way. Um, and I'd encourage you to play around with these in your sketch. Maybe think about parameters that you want to be able to change as a result um, and add these kind of elements to your sketches.